Welcome to Into the Woo, a wellness podcast hosted by Alice Hu. I will be exploring the world of crystals, energy healing, spirit guides, and more to help you understand how they can unlock your potential. These concepts have helped me discover my purpose and my truth, and I can't wait to hear how they will inspire you. I'll show you how they can be accessible and powerful tools in your life. All right, so we're back for round two for this clubhouse room about spiritual awakenings. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I really like short episodes. Wonderful for walks if you're commuting, running errands, doing house chores. I find that those 10, 20, 30 minute episodes are the perfect chunks of time. And so this is why I split this one hour clubhouse room into two episodes. So here we go. Enjoy. Uh, When I had my first kind of awakening, I was at a, a festival and took some plant medicine and then took some more by accident and uh, really went to places that I was definitely not prepared for in my early 20s. And, um, you know, now with more space and perspective, I can see how it was just divinely orchestrated and how it happened for me. Um, and at that time, it was, I mean, I just fell apart and was like suicidal pretty much um and that was the you know the the seed of my transformation and everything has kind of flown downstream from that point um so it's interesting to have a um you know really kind of traumatic like there's a before and after point in my life and it was the most traumatic experience of my life and it's and i'm still working to integrate that for 15 years or something um and yet you know all these kind of uh awakening awakening death and rebirth i'm relating to them um which with much more trust of the unknown and yeah it's it's an unfolding and now I'm at a point where I see everything like as happening for me um, and that there's rich learning in everything, even the gravest disappointments and learning to stay open. And, you know, coming to that realization is so powerful because disappointment can then become the seed of quantum creation where like, you, you thought things like that things didn't work out, and yet if you remain open, you can see there's actually a bigger purpose, or like mm. even something something better unfolding. Um, and not to even put a value judgment on it, but um, yeah, that's I mean, that's what I, that's all I have to say right now. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, I I agree completely because you know in those moments that really don't turn out the way you expect them to. There's a frustration, but also just because we're programmed to want things to happen the way we want it immediately, right? Instant gratification. But then um, over time, you realize, you know, actually, that was for my highest good. And, you know, had, had that not happened, you wouldn't be where you are today. I know that um, I myself, I've experienced like, you know, small and big disappointments, but, you know, they were all wonderful things looking back on them now when you go through them super difficult extremely annoying but um i think it's it's always a matter of perspective right it's always about you know are you going to transmute this energy are you going to transmute this experience to work for you um instead of you know having your mind use it to work against you yes (laughs) ma'am totally totally Hey, Jordan, how are you? Good to see you on stage again. Do you have something to share? Hi, Alice, and hi, Katie, um, and everyone else um, here in this room. Um, Alice, it's so funny. I got this notification that you were hosting this room, and I immediately went in, and, you know, once I saw what the room was and I saw who was in here, I 
really felt called to coming in um, simply because, you know, I really resonate with how you are talking about going through your Saturn return and really feeling a spiritual awakening at that point in your life. And um, I definitely felt a similar way to a couple years ago. And it's so funny because um, I really felt like during that time, um, it's actually when I met you um, and I went to your first uh, Woo Woo Company event. Um, I think Katie may have popped out, but it was Katie was there too. And it was the first time I had met Katie and um, it was just such a pivotal point in my life. Um, I was ending a almost eight year relationship, moving, starting a new job. So many things were happening and I was just discovering, um, you know, really diving into mindfulness and meditation, you know, just having these different mindsets and perspectives of life um, and getting out of my comfort zone, meeting people who had um, similar sort of mindsets that I was or sort of on these similar paths and it really just helped open my eyes and um you know I still feel like I'm obviously um continuing on that journey and I just wanted to hop on here because Alice like you were such a pivotal part in in all of that and I want to thank you so um I'm Jordan and I finished Oh my God, Jordan, I had no idea. I knew that I introduced you to like sound baths and you'd come to some of my events before we started working together. Um, but I had no idea. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Seriously, Alice. Um, I appreciate everything that you do for your community and it's, it's really amazing. So keep it up. I mean, these are the words that really keep me going because entrepreneurship and spiritual entrepreneurship is very difficult. Sometimes the things that I do, whether it's like my podcast, you know, post on Instagram or a workshop, like, I don't know, like if people are listening, I don't know if it's, you know, something that is resonating, but every now and then the universe sends me a message, like, like the one that Jordan just shared, it just really lights me up. And then I, I remember, I remember my why, I remember the service. And if I'm able to help one person, then I can go to sleep at night feeling fulfilled and joyful. Welcome Beth. It's good to see you here. Do you have a story to share or a question to ask? Hi, sorry. I was like trying to figure out how to get off mute. How are you, Alice? I'm um, good. I'm so good. I'm happy that I, I stumbled upon this room and I was just like scrolling through Clubhouse. Um, so yeah, I I'm actually feel like I'm kind of in the middle of a spiritual awakening. Um, kind of, I'm like seeing a sort of like a phased approach. Like, um, you know, I, I know that you know that I've been in the entrepreneurship space as well for a really long time, for about four years now. And, um, you know, as most people, 2020 was a really hard year all around um, for you know, physical, mental, emotional energy. It was just really exhausting. And for me, my business especially suffered. Um, so I was just felt like I was getting pulled in 7,000 different directions last year and trying to figure out, you know, how do I navigate this new normal with my business and make an income and also stay mentally sane and, you know, practice self care and like just juggling all of these things. And, um, you know, I, I had was thankful to have some success while in quarantine with some events that I ran virtually, but, you know, I did feel like, you know, the fact that I always compare it to, I like, it's like a metaphor, of like kind of like taking drugs. You have that like high that like, you know, that temporary high and then the crash can be really bad and then you just like you know keep taking that hit keep taking that hit and wanting to feel that high but it's not sustainable for the long run and just like being level and in equilibrium with your body and your mind and um at the end of the year I was just in such a depressed funk um I was you know like still <clears throat> my eating disorder had came back and I was you know suffering with anxiety and depression and full force. And, um, it was really hard. And I, you know, I, once 2021 came around in January, it's, you know, it's always cliche to have these like new year's resolutions, I guess, but I kind of went into the year setting intentions instead. Um, and I kind of came to this realization where like, okay, whatever I'm doing right now in my life is not sustainable. And for so long I had prided myself and really defined myself as this like you know, for lack of a better term, like boss babe, running my own businesses and, 
you know, hustling and the grind and all that stuff. And I think, you know, a lot of people don't talk about how difficult it really is. And I'm sure you understand this too, Alice, and anyone else listening who is in the, you know, space and just work in general can be really hard. Um, but yeah, so I just, I came to this kind of realization at the end of the year and I had to really start writing down like, okay, what are my triggers? Like, what is making me feel this way? Why do I feel like I'm just like running on E and there's, I'm not feeling my body correctly, um, not listening to my mind and all this stuff. And it really just kept pointing back to work. And I was like, you know, this whole, for the past four years, I've found so much success with my businesses, but like, and I think I was also, you know, afraid to just kind of like, quote unquote, give up and take the, nor- you know, for lack of a better term, like the normal um, employment route, right? Like the nine to five um, and go back to that. I was really afraid of like what people would think of me and like what I would think of myself, what I think of myself as a failure. And I just had to release that and let go of it. And in January, especially, I really like went head in on manifesting and really studied up on human design and just tried to find like, okay, where, where am I finding, where can I find my balance and you know, what things in the, like, what can I ask for the universe? What can I work towards to really bring me this peace of mind that I am craving so hard. And I was like, you know, I, the more I thought about it, the more that I allowed myself to release of any, you know, feelings of failure or feelings like I'm, you know, just, giving up or selling out and like kind of created this buzzword for 2021 of the word, just like stability, whatever that meant, whether that meant, you know, financially, career wise, mentally, physically, I just want to feel stable, which I think is, you know, seems very boring to some people, but I think it's super, super important in a lot of ways. And what can you do to achieve that? So then you can start working towards other goals for yourself. Um, so I kind of, I came to the terms with that and then, you know, I started really manifesting like, okay, if I'm going to go back to this nine to five life, you know, I don't want to just go back to anything. I want something that's going to fulfill me and not put me back in this toxic work mindset. So, you know, started writing down like what I'm looking for a job and a company and the work culture has to be there and all this stuff. Um, and I kept thinking back to this, um, company that I applied for like four years ago I just started grad school I applied for a fellowship there and to start a base in Arlington and I managed to the final round I was able to go to the office and meet the team and I felt so connected to them and I was really upset when I didn't get it because I was like you know this I felt like I belonged there and I I've, I've thought about them all the time and like that's the kind of company that I wanted to work with I was like all right I want it to be like story blocks there's the name of the company like I really I value that like those people were awesome. They were inclusive and just supported a lot of the same things that I did. And their work was really innovative and creative. And I felt like it just like fueled my mind in a different way than most jobs that I had seen. And so I'm like, all right, I like want to work there, but you know, there's no jobs right now. And then like literally the next day when I woke up, there was a job opening for like a brand marketing position, which is exactly what I wanted to do. It was, I had written it down. I wanted my title to be, brand marketing manager at a company like Storybox. And the next day I woke up and there was a brand marketing manager position open. Um, so I applied and, uh, you know, two weeks later to narrow the story down, I got the job and I, Congrats. I thank you. I'm so excited. I have like three weeks off, um, until I start. So yeah, I feel like I'm in this midst of a spiritual awakening really. And finally just like this step, it's coming to reality and I know it's kind of trivial to think of your job as your life but for me I've always defined work as my life which is something I'm trying to move away from and you know getting this position where I know I'm going to be able to define myself on based on other aspects of me is going to be really exciting so I'll have the mental space to do so I won't be so consumed by my work and trying to run a business and do all that stuff I'll have space for other things and so I'm so excited and I feel like, you know, I'm just at this new chapter in my life. I'm about to turn 28 in March. Um, and I'm just, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I already feel my head clear up, um, after so many, so many months of it being so fogged and so clogged of like, just not feeling good enough, imposter syndrome, all those things. So yeah, you know, the, the work of manifesting and putting the work in, I had never really 
invested myself in until, you know, a couple months ago and I've really seen the benefits of it. And it's like, you know, you can really manifest and create the life that you want. And, you know, the whole human design aspect of it, like I, my human design category is manifester. So um, a small percentage of the population. So I've really been trying to study that chart and see, you know, what other things can I implement to make me feel more balanced. So yes, I feel like I'm in like the middle of my awakening and I'm very excited. <laughs> ah, that is amazing, Beth. Thank you for being vulnerable and thank you for sharing your experience. Um, it's always really unique to catch someone <laughs> um, as they experience their spiritual awakening. And, you know, I think you touched upon a couple very important things um, in terms of, you know, how we define ourselves. And you are definitely not the only one who um, thinks that their work is their their life, that their purpose. And I mean, we're at work for, um, you know, most of the day. And it can be so easy to identify with certain labels. And I know that, you know, I have felt that for myself as well. You know, you're like, you're, you're, whether you're attached to a company, a role, um, or, or just entrepreneurship. And I believe that entrepreneurship is a journey that you can, you know, you, that kind of ebbs and flows. Right. Um, and I think that we are redefining what that means and what that looks like, because like you said, you just need, um, stability and you need to work on other areas of your life and having that nine to five, that corporate role and not being an entrepreneur full time. Cause I know that you're probably going to do some other things on the side. You just are always so busy, just provides like mental, um, spiritual, emotional space and clarity. And so thank you. Thank you so much for sharing Beth. All right, next up, I think this is going to be our last question because I want to be very mindful. We're coming up to an hour. So Peggy, hello. Do you have a story to share or a question? Hi, thank you for having me. I'd like to share my spiritual awakening story. So it started with plant medicine and it just really changed my perspective as if I'm now slowly just starting to wake up. I can't pinpoint the exact moment. All I can say is it was just a shift in me um, as I experimented with that. And I and slowly, I think I continue to wake up a little more each time as time passes. So um, just really allowed, I think it just really helped me to connect with myself. And in that, I think I found my breath. Um, I realized how disconnected I was with everything, myself in the present moment. And it just allowed me to reconnect with myself and through my breath. So it was all about slowing down and not speeding up, which is surprising for me, um, surprisingly. And all those spiritual books I've read on meditation, yoga, and breath work, I just couldn't understand it in the past and resonate with it until that moment when I had my own experience and everything clicked. So, um, yeah, and suddenly it's as if all those things are now in my repertoire and I'm more attracted to them and I could understand why and really reap the benefits versus before where I really tried to, I wanted to, and I couldn't. And uh, it just really showed me it's possible. Um, it's possible. Like this is possible. It exists. I can do it. And in there, I also found calm and peace with just kind of being in the present moment. And another thing I really learned is just not to grab it all at once, but really just savor each moment and dive deeper into each of them. Like there's a window to every moment and to really just savor and stay in there. Um, yeah, it really helped with introspecting and working on myself. Um, I feel that I'm able to process my own emotions and thoughts more. Um, I didn't think, I didn't know I was thinking in this type of thought pattern and suddenly I was pulled out of it and now I have a choice and I can see that I continue to have a choice in each moment and that's all I have to share. Thank you so much, Peggy. It's just another wonderful example of things that we know. So knowledge and when knowledge becomes wisdom and we're able to embody it, 
um, that's where uh, the connection is. And yes, thank you so much for sharing your story. Okay, just last person to share, and then I will end the room to respect everyone's time. It's also getting a bit late on the East Coast here in the U.S. Gino, welcome. Good to see you here. Do you have a story to share? I would, we would love to hear it. Uh, thanks. Uh, I do research in this area uh, on uh, transformation and enlightenment and awakening experiences specifically, especially people that uh, have uh, have gone through uh, like a, a rapid transformation, which usually uh, involves going into a mental hospital. Uh, there's a whole movement called uh, um, Emerging Proud by a woman named Katie Mottram in the UK, where people that have kind of gone through this experience and are sharing that. And uh, she's created a film on that. And there's another film called Crazy Wise, uh, which, uh, which uh, a, a guy, Phil Borges, uh, uh, did a, 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 like a professionally shot uh, documentary kind of on the topic. And I just want to thank you, Alice, for putting rooms like this together and holding space. We actually have a club called the Red Pill Club that I'd like to invite all of you, if you're in this room and if you've been through this experience, to also join. There's also, uh, for the ones that, are, that have been through it a lot longer, there's also a metaphysics and consciousness club I'd like to invite you all to as well. And then um, I do research in this area, and we've been trying to build uh, uh, communities um, online and physical locally uh, in uh, different people, uh, different cities around the world to create safe spaces for people that have kind of been through these processes. Uh, usually a lot of surreal shit happens and most people that haven't been through the experience, if you talk to most pe people that haven't been through the experience, they're gonna kind of think you're kind of crazy or out of it. But the idea is to, to create safe spaces like what Alice is doing uh, online here, but where physical meetups happen. We're actually, I'm based in Hong Kong and we're actually organizing gatherings. We're doing one on March 6th and we're actually planning a a festival, a consciousness festival here as well. But uh, there's a, <clears throat> in my bio, we have a whole model of this whole process of development. There's a talk I give called Personal Development, Mental Health, and Human Potential. And I actually research people with special abilities. In fact, there's a guy, Adrian Tapbinder, who's in the audience, who's one of the best applied kinesiology people. Uh, you should follow him. He's uh, a person that has access to other forms of knowing. And um, what we're working on building are basically a uh, social fabric to support people kind of going through kind of spiritual emergency uh, situations uh, and then having facilities to help them kind of integrate, stabilize, and then find employment, uh, a way of sustaining themselves. Usually people that go through this experience can't really function in modern society anymore because the stories that used to drive them. I don't mean anything anymore. And then beyond that, we're working on a, a global decentralized modern mystery school to help people through this process to develop their gifts. And I uh, just want to thank you, Alice, again, for putting this together. And welcome to join and really excited to, to meet all of you. Gino, that is so cool. I'm so glad you joined this room and that you raised your hand. Um, I definitely want to talk to you more about all the things that you are doing. Um, you know, the, 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 the online spaces, the physical spaces in the school to really help people through this process, just because so many more people are going to go through it. I think that a lot of people went through it um, in the pandemic last year and right now, but they don't realize it. They probably just think they're just like, you know, crazy, like everything's going fine in my life. I don't know why I want everything to change. But then also I know through people that I speak to at my events, um, or people who work with me one-on-one -on -one, that there are so many people with psychic capabilities and they've kind of um, put them away. And every now and then, you know, in their lives, it kind of pops up again. And, and it's just, um, very disturbing to them. They don't know how to manage it. And it's been uh, ridiculed or um, it's it's been very scary for them in the past. But truly, um, once they're able to kind of harness that energy and that talent, magical things that happen. I think, you know, the people who are quote unquote um, successful in traditional terms in business, they have these skills and they've just kind of repackaged it, reframed it in their mind to be intuition or like, oh, I just have like 
really good hunches. I'm just lucky. I just know how to do these things. But I'm like, no, you, you are, you have a, a clair. You're claircognizant. You're clairsentient. You're something like you just know. So, um, I will definitely be joining those clubs. You said the medical, metaphysical room and the red pill room. Uh, yeah, they're clubs. Um, and then if you like, I'm for the red pill one. I'm happy to make you a, a an admin as well. And people that you find here, feel free to uh, have them join. We're just collecting them. And then I actually, we're putting together a questionnaire to, to, and so some of the things that we're doing for the people that have been through the process and have stabilized, uh, and then have some kind of healing gifts, what we're doing is uh, we're putting this program together where I'm asking healers to donate two hours a week of whatever healing modality they have. And for mystics to donate like a day a week of whatever modality they have uh, and the approaches that they have to help midwife people going through this process. And so usually for those of you that have been through this, you probably know that um, there was a period where things were disoriented. Some people actually give all of their <laughs> their, their uh, possessions away. And so they have no resource and they have no way of generating income. And so part of this is, is to have like uh, a, a, a network of people that have been through the process to help kind of uh, guide people kind of through the process and give them tools to, to ground and, and better integrate. Um, and, and so, and then as people go through this and access these healings and, and, and are, uh, are grounded, become more grounded and integrated, they then join the community of people that also offer services. So it, it kind of grows as well too. Um, but we're right now we're putting an online thing for for a for people that uh, are uh, are uh, uh, can offer services and then b for people that know people or that they themselves are going through an emergency situation. Um, and if you would like to meet, <laughs> is like uh, there are, I have a we're piloting. There are about four of them right now that we're dealing with uh, in kind of North Carolina in uh, in. Uh, in uh, Toronto and two in the Bay Area um, that are people that were hospitalized and now are on meds and, and just trying to trying to reconcile their uh, their situation. Can I have one moment? Gino, every day on this app, I've been delivered a gift and you are that gift tonight. So thank you so much. The work you're doing is revolutionary. It is so profound. I have had so many experiences in my awakening where two in which I thought I was going through a stroke because I couldn't move, I couldn't speak, my hands were stuck in a mudra. And then I started channeling Yeshua, Jesus. And I've had many experiences as a child of connecting with divine beings and psychic premonitions through dreams and it was all so scary because no one around me could relate and no one could hold space for me or connect me with other light worker mystics being such as such as myself so thank you so much for what you're orchestrating it is definitely a divine intelligence a, a portal that you that is working with you and through you i'm so grateful for what you're co-creating right now thank you Yes, truly uh, incredible. Thanks a lot. <laughs> no, we're all on the same team. And I think if you're in this space, the objective is uh, how to facilitate uh, collective awakening uh, and help people that are kind of downloading kind of these new systems to help create the new systems to make it easier for next generations beyond us. Yes, completely. And thank you for sharing what you're doing. And um, everyone, please follow the moderators, everyone on stage. I am planning on hosting this room every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. And so I hope that you will come back and I'll have rotating topics. Um, this week's is spiritual awakening and I will let my intuition, I'll let source spirit communicate with me for what we should talk about next week. But I want to thank everyone who has shared their story. And if you didn't get a chance to share your story, please come back next week. And I'm delighted to be able to create this space and just uh, it's just been so amazing just meeting people from all over uh, the world and and I think the most important thing is to realize that you are not alone and that there is um, support 
and there is a purpose to all of this. So thank you. Thank you, everyone who is in this room. And yes, please follow the moderator so you know the next time that we are um, hosting this room and other rooms as well. With Hi, I'm so I'm so sorry. I, I, I feel so um, upset almost that I missed this talk. I just hopped in the last 10 minutes. Um, so I, I've had uh, two Kundalini awakenings in my life. Both of the times I had no idea what the hell was happening with me and had to kind of like navigate it alone. And I'm so happy that um, there are spaces like this for people that have gone through what we went through. And I just wanted to know if there is... Um, yeah, I, you just mentioned a weekly time. I think I didn't. I didn't catch the, the day and the time. But if there's like a weekly time, because I know I I know some people that could greatly benefit from this. So I would just, uh, yeah, if you could just share that information one more time. Oh yes, of course, Jules, of course. Uh, so it is Thursdays at nine p.m. Eastern time. Nine p.m. Eastern. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes. Well, thank you, Jules. And come back next week. I want to hear your story. I want to learn more about you. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining this room. Thank you to all the moderators, new faces, new friends, and familiar friends. Daniel, Anna, and I host a manifestation room Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern. If you want to join in, it's happening in a couple days. I can't believe it's almost the weekend again. But with that, um, I will end this room. And I am wishing everyone so much um, abundance and blessings, especially it's um, the beginning of Pisces season. Very intuitive sign. <laughs> Thank you, Alice, for hosting this room. Definitely will uh, see you on Sunday again and yeah, talk about manifestations and welcome everybody to join as well. And also, thank you, Gino, for uh, sharing those amazing um, information that we kind of didn't know. But now we know we definitely would love to um, build this community together. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. What did you think of this episode? What do you think about Clubhouse? Do you want to join Clubhouse? Maybe after that first episode, that first part, you were inspired to jump on the platform. I want to know. It's a wonderful platform app for you to get over public speaking and to really find support. I mean, I've had some wonderful moments where I've shared um, vulnerable stories and experiences and other people have done the same in the rooms that I've been as well. So really just so much attention, intention and care for so many of these rooms. And you definitely will find your tribe if you decide to jump on this platform. And if you need an invite, please ping me. Let me know. You can text me at 202. 918-3414 or DM me on Instagram. So I would love to know which episodes so far in this season are your favorite. We're about to wrap up season one of Into the Woo and I can't believe by the time we finish it will be around 40 episodes and I I've been planning the next season and I can't wait to share it with you. The last episode of this season is going to give you a sneak peek. But, you know, I also really want to know your feedback. Which episodes have been your favorite and what questions do you have? What do you want me to speak about? What type of people do you want me to interview and have conversations with me? You can text me at 202-918-3414 or send me a DM on Instagram.